Morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. I want to do another instalment in my um, series on the life of Christ and this is instalment number 14 and we call this one the decree of Caesar Augustus. Now we just have a few verses in Luke, Luke chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria and all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. Now it's Luke that tells us about the decree of Caesar Augustus and he, he adds the important note that this decree was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. Now Luke expects us all to know that all what all this means and to put the jigsaw together um, it was a census and it was a poll tax everyone was obliged to return to the city of their ancestors and there to be listed and taxed accordingly there is nothing very significant about the taxing what is a huge significance is the timing this census put Mary and Joseph on the road to Bethlehem um, and this was Joseph's ancestral town. The time spent at Bethlehem for people was probably very brief. They had only had to register and pay their tax and then they could go home, whatever that was. They probably were there for only one or two days at the most, possibly even one day. Now watch this. Mary and Joseph arrived late. Late in the sense that the city was bursting at its seams with thousands upon thousands of visitors. Famously, there was no room in the inn. It seems that there was only one inn. Mary is almost due to give birth. Um, and the birth occurs at exactly the time when they arrive at Bethlehem. A day before or after and Christ would have been not born in Bethlehem. So who fixed this date? No doubt this was something ordered by the Lord from eternity. And how did Caesar Augustus know what date to pick for his sentence, for his census? Well he didn't. For once in his long sad life Caesar got something right. Who was this man? Well, we know exactly that he was born, 20, on the, born on the 23rd of September, 63 BC, and exactly when he died. He died on the 19th of August um, in 14 AD. We know exactly what he looked like. He was middle height, strong, well-built, short hair, good looking. He was the founder of the Roman Empire and its first emperor. He ruled from 27 BC to 14 AD. He was born with the name of Gaius Octavius and he was born into an old, wealthy, horse-loving branch of the plebeian Octavia family. And after the death of Julius Caesar, who was his mother's great uncle, he was adopted into his family with Mark Antony and, and Marcus Leptus, he, he formed a rule over all the Romans and between the three of them they ruled over the whole empire dividing it up and acting as military dictators. Eventually Leptus was forced into exile and stripped of power. Uh, Anthony lost his the Battle of Actium <coughs> and committed suicide. Augustus was granted total rule over the entire emperor, empire for life. He established a republic with the Senate acting on his instructions. He was a bold tactician who often stepped forward to build up his personal influence and resources while his enemies dithered. Uh, he refused to be called king, preferring the title first citizen. His reign brought about a time of peace over the whole civilised world. He enlarged the Roman Empire extensively to include 
Egypt and Lower Germany, Spain. He developed the famous Roman roads and established the Praetorian Guard, a sort of a police force, a fire service in one. He died at the age of 75 years of age and was succeeded by his son Tiberius. On the 1st of January uh, 42 BC, the Senate declared Julius Caesar to be a god and therefore Augustus became son of God. <clears throat> after this, uh, after his uh, victorious battles and ruthless politics, he changed his name from Octavius to Augustus, which meant illustrious one. So how does this man of immense personal wealth and rule touch the Christmas story? Well, Augustus made a decree that all the world should be taxed. Um, <clears throat> Augustus was a reformer in terms of the revenue of Rome. He took a very small amount from every transaction in the empire. It was what we would call a value added tax today. This funded his many wars and built huge building projects. And when he died, he said, I found Rome brick and left it marble. One of his taxations brought a very obscure couple into a little town called Bethlehem at exactly the right moment in history, without an error degree of perhaps even one day. And this Caesar, called the Son of God, set a course of events in motion that would bring about the birth in Bethlehem of the true Son of God. Let all that sink in. We look forward to catching up with you on our next episode. And God bless you all. Bye for now.